Hello, this is Zach with MusclesAndVeggies.com, and joined alongside of me is my big sister, Jodell Fitzwater, from GetFitWithJodell.com, and we are a brother-sister uh, combo of nutrition educators wanting to give information uh, to the public, to people out there that are interested in these topics, such as we have today, digestive health. Okay, so we're going to talk about digestive health. Um, Jodell, let's, let's get started by going into the function of the digestive system, what it entails, and what are our precautions, what do we need to look out for? So go ahead and describe that for us a little bit. Well, as you know from the get-go of me teaching nutrition, all health begins in the gut and all disease begins in the gut. And I didn't coin that, Hi Hippocrates did, but I really firmly believe it because this is the information center and when food comes in it has to go down into this whole process of beautiful organization by a creator that has manifested this system within us to function optimally if it's given the right conditions and so just in a nutshell you i mean we kind of understand a little bit of how digestion works but let's just take kind of digestion 101 and go with the fact that we swallow the food, it comes down into our first line of defense, which is your stomach, okay? And the stomach is supposed to have a good amount of acid in it so that it can kill off pathogens or foodborne illness that's in your food, you know, E. coli and stuff like that, that salmonella that shouldn't be there. So that's the first line of defense, but it also breaks down amino acids in your gut to make good um, neurotransmitter function. So amino acids are important for brain neurotransmitter function, your serotonin, dopamine, all of which are your feel-good neurotransmitters and your pleasure and motivation is the dopamine. So got to have those intact too. Once it passes from the stomach acid, if there's been adequate enough level in there, it goes then into the small intestine, kind of the duodenum. It kind of gathers bile from the gallbladder and the liver. And also the pancreas releases um, insulin in response to the food as well as secretin. And some other digestive enzymes go in there and help break things down. Then it moves down. You know, now we're traveling down into your small intestine where it's got loops and loops. You know, you've heard them say your intestines, if you laid them out, are as big as a tennis court field. So you've got quite a bit of loops and whoops to go through with all that food. But the main issue is that good bacteria in there should start to help break down the food even further. You've got it more to be like a mass rather than this bolus of food. It's now kind of this tiny mass that's in there moving through. And it should be digesting nicely, not causing gas and bloating, not fermenting and sitting there in the gut. Um, then finally, we once it's all processed nicely, it moves down into the lower intestine where it's formed into fecal matter. And then, you know, a little bit of water comes in to help it move down and the muscles around the colon help it move down out your poop chute. So <laughs> all of that has to take place in an organized system in a fashion needing all those certain digestive enzymes, the acid, um, certain alkalinity, as well as acidic environment. All of that is very important. And so there's many, many things that can go wrong in the span of that. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. Very nice. So one thing that caught my attention when you were talking about amino acids being important for our brain function and also just how important amino acids are for our re repair and tissue building and muscle recovery and muscle building. And uh, so again, if we're not having enough of this certain substance that we're going to talk about that um, we could be in trouble, our brain's not working and our body's not working. Uh, so then it starts to screw up our metabolism as well. So what does adequate stomach acid look like? So talking about stomach acid here and how it helps us in our digestive system, what, are the, what does it look like? Yeah, so that is our mainstay today is I wanted to focus on stomach acid. And for sure, when, when you have good stomach acid levels, not only are you breaking down like pathogens and the bacteria that shouldn't be coming in, but there's, there's more than that. There uh, promotes digestion in, a, in a many vital nutrients, such as iron, copper, zinc. The absorption happens better when you have adequate stomach levels. B12. Um, in fact, your stomach has something called intrinsic factor, which makes um, B, the, kind of the B12 in the gut. If you don't have that, you're not making it. As well as further down the line, you're going to be making it with proper bacteria. But it all starts in the gut, like it says. And um, it helps with 
digesting protein, like we mentioned, if you're not breaking down protein, then that means you're not breaking down the amino acids from the protein. And therefore, no stomach acid equals no protein absorption equals no amino acids equals damaged cells and disease. Um, this could even go further down the line as far as depression. If we don't make those stomach acid, if we don't make the amino acids in the stomach acid, we're not making the serotonin that makes us feel good. So depression can set in. Um, it prevents bacterial and fungal overgrowth. Um, as, and we're gonna talk about how low stomach acid can actually translate into candida overgrowth further down the line in the digestive tract. It prevents you from developing anemia. Um, it prevents stomach cancer. So that's kind of a big one since stomach cancer is a very deadly form of cancer. And it keeps skin conditions from flaring up. Actually, when you have things like acne, dermatitis, eczema, hives, those can be an indication that you're suffering from low stomach acid. And a little, another little lesser known organ that we're really gonna touch on today, it keeps your gallbladder in check. And so there's a few things that have to happen with stomach acid, and if it's not there, your gallbladder is not going to have a nice time. So um, it prevents rheumatoid arthritis, osteoporosis, ulcerative colitis, diabetes. So in a sense, what we're talking about is it's anti-aging and it's actually keeping you from inflammation. That's how powerful the right amount of stomach acid is. And there's actually a really great book out there that people should go get. It's an older book, but it's called Why Stomach Acid is Good for You. So I highly encourage that book. Okay, so... I know people are wondering right now, um, how do I know if I have low stomach acid? What, what does that look like? So explain to us uh, the, the symptoms of low stomach acid. What does that look like? How do we tell if we have a problem here? Well, like I mentioned before, one of the big signs is kind of anxiety or a low, line, low level depression. Um, some people that can't pinpoint, you know, I just don't feel like myself or I don't feel good most of the time, but yet I want to. It could be as simple as stomach acid, not to undermine your emotional aspects, but it could be something as if you feel like you should be happy, but you're not for any reason, it's more biochemical going on. So it could be low stomach acid. Other things like um, peeling, cracking fingernails or, 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 you know, not able to grow hair really well, or like I mentioned, skin issues. If you have constant like itching skin or maybe dermatitis where you've got that chicken skin, things like that. Um, as far as digestion goes, you could have an aversion to meat. So perhaps you would like to eat meat, but it just doesn't sit well with you, or you don't want to eat meat because every time you do, you typically have some sort of digestive issues. And that could be the fact that you don't have enough acid to break down the protein that, that meat is made up of. Um, also things like if you do get like belching or bloating within an hour after eating, after a meal, that's not normal. Even though you might have had it for uh, most of your life, that's not just you. That's actually low stomach acid. So even That's funny. That's funny that you say that because it's like everything on TV when people eat and then they belch. And that's like a, you know, it's like a common mainstay of, of eating and then, then you burp afterwards. Yeah. And so therein lies, like the person goes and says, oh, well, I'm having, you know, digestive issues. I'll take a Tums. Well, here's a little known fact about Tums. It's it, number one, it has aluminum, which we definitely don't want any heavy metal poisoning more so than we're already getting. But Tums are made of calcium carbonate and calcium carbonate um, is very alkaline. Okay. The stomach should not be alkaline at all. It is acid. If you poured the contents of your stomach acid out onto the floor, it should burn a hole in your carpet. <laughs> I mean, it should be that powerful, but sadly, most of us are not. And one of those reasons too behind that is um, the processed foods, the sugar, the, the caffeine, all the coffee we take in and stuff like that, but also water. Um, if you're drinking a load amount of water when you're having a meal, you're diluting your stomach acid. So your stomach acid can't fully help you digest that meal. Imagine if you will, like you're, you've got this great stew on the stove and you gotta get it boiling. You gotta get this great boiling pot going, but yet you keep adding cold water into it. Is it ever gonna boil? Is it ever going to kill off the bacteria that you need it to kill off or get the temperature up high enough to cook the, the food that's in there? No. So therein lies why, warm beverages or, you know, at least small sips of like a, a tepid beverage is better than these cold, ice cold waters and juices and sodas at a mealtime. Interesting. Interesting. So, uh, and these are just a few of the things that you listed out here just to recap. So depression and anxiety issues is, could be a sign. 
uh, skin issues, um, like dermatological type stuff, meat problems. So if you got problems with meat and, and specifically you know you do, that could be an issue with low stomach acid, belching, bloating, all those type of uh, indigestion issues post eating. So you talked a little bit about the gallbladder. Let's get into what the gallbladder is. Why do we need it? What does it do? Uh, what does it have to do with? Yeah, so that's another issue too, is if you have low stomach acid, fats might also be hard to digest. So you'll hear, hear people say, well, I don't do well on fats, that they just sit in my stomach. I just don't feel like I'm breaking them down. That's another uh, issue that you could be having low stomach acid. And so what happens is te people tend to eat low fat when they have trouble breaking something down because carbohydrates leave the stomach the fastest. Okay, so they are like tissue paper on the fire. They burn up the quickest. And then protein is a little, takes a bit longer to digest. So it's like putting a log, you know, one small log on your fire. Whereas fat is like putting 50 logs on your fire. It takes a long time. It leaves the stomach the last. And so sadly, people will divert to a, a low fat diet. And mainly because it's very mainstream to go low fat if you're losing, if you're looking to lose weight. But what happens then is the fat is not there when the, when the, the mass leaves the stomach in the du, into the duodenum, into the small intestine. There is no fat, okay? And so, or in most cases, it's very low fat or no fat. So the gallbladder's job when it senses fat is to be released. The liver releases, tells the gallbladder to release that bile and break down the fat. If there isn't any, what do you think is going to happen to that bile that keeps building up in the gallbladder? Okay, so the liver is sending, it's making bile and it's sending all that bile to the gallbladder. The gallbladder should be like, like this little um, contract and release, like push the bile out, fill back up, push the bile out, fill back up. If there is no fat to release into that little mass of food, then the gallbladder just goes, okay, more bile, more bile, more bile, more bile, more bile. And where do you think we get gallbladder attacks from? Okay, so it's like, then the vicious cycle continues because you'll go to your doctor. They say, oh, you're having gallbladder issues. You might want to eat low fat or let's go ahead and take your gallbladder out. <laughs> and really have to go low fat because you don't have a gallbladder, which is a misnomer. You don't have to go low fat if you don't have a gallbladder. Um, but therein lies why it happens is because we've typically become a nation that, oh, if I, you know, we're chronic dieters. If I'm going to go on a diet, I'm going to go low fat or no fat. And that's where a lot of issues can come, not only with the stomach acid, but now further down the line with the gallbladder too. Interesting. So it's I, just like anything else. Well, your gallbladder is messed up. Well, let's take it out of there. You know, let's not find out why your gallbladder could be having issues. Let's just remove it. So... Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, that was an organized system of why we have every single thing in our body that we do. Something bigger than us knew that we needed it. The appendix should not just be taken out. The appendix actually stores extra bacteria, extra good bacteria, your gut bacteria, in case it needs to send more out. It's kind of like a little holding tank. And the same with the gallbladder. The liver can produce bile, but we need that extra little holding tank in the event that, you know, we do happen to eat a meal that we just couldn't control that has no fat. It can expand a little bit, but we need to make sure that that holding tank is, is being smushed and opened and smushed and opened too. So. Okay, so we can round this out for uh, the people viewing this. Let's go back to the stomach acid where this all began and let's talk about if you have any of these symptoms or things going on and you may have low stomach acid, what can they do? What can they do to improve it? Okay, well that's a really great question because there are lots you can do. Okay, so like probably the first thing I would tell people is the water thing, like switching to warm water during meals or hot, you know, herbal teas, stuff like that during meal times, and then cooler beverages in between. And then one of the best things you can do is add a bit of the apple cider vinegar to your water. Um, and that actually helps to naturally boost the levels of stomach acid. So just take a little capful, pour it in a glass of water. If you want to sweeten it a little bit, add a little few drops of stevia in there, maybe some fresh squeeze of lemon. Lemon juice is also very helpful for stomach acid levels. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of go by this approach of weed, seed, and feed. So you pull out what's causing the issue and mainly the issues surrounding um, any sort of low stomach acid when it comes to food are the most inflammatory foods. So you have gluten, sugar, dairy for some people, soy for sure, unless it's fermented, and caffeine. Um, all of these are 
things that people would do well to eliminate to see kind of a natural buildup back of the of stomach acid levels. Nicotine, alcohol, artificial food dyes, colors and sweeteners, all of those need to be eliminated. So really read, read, read your labels and know what you're putting into your system and swap those out with natural plant-based foods. So instead of gluten, you know, containing breads and stuff, use small amounts of sweet potatoes and rice and um, things that are plant-based, good nutrient-dense vegetables instead. And, and for people with low stomach acid, they would, they would do really well to cook them to some degree, maybe not have so much raw, but cook just to some degree so they are easier to digest in the gut as well. So that would be kind of the, the easiest ways to remedy the issue. Now, if we need to go a little deeper, like people that are suffering depression and have super low stomach acid levels, that's when we want to look at more of um, supplementing with something called betaine HCL, hydrochloric acid made from beets. So it's a natural supplement that you would take at every meal. And generally, I'll start somebody out with 250 milligrams um, but they can definitely see their healthcare practitioner or their doctor and decide if that's right for them. You can even get a test called the Heidelberg capsule test that a doctor can do to tell if your stomach acid levels are low. But generally, um, if you're over 50, you're going to have low stomach acid. Stomach acid levels decline as we age. So it's just a good rule of thumb to keep making sure and covering your bases and just take a supplement every now and then and make sure that you're building those stomach acid levels up. One other thing that I want to touch on is the fact that, I don't know if you can see this, but if I were to be on my phone right now, um, can you see that where my phone is, you know, texting or being on Instagram or something, and when people are laying on the couch or their bed, where is the phone? It's generally right on their abdomen, right on that stomach itself. And we know that these devices emit radiation. We know that. And so start to be mindful about how often you can put your phone in airplane mode. Let's say you're reading a book on your phone and you're not really using the internet. Could put it in airplane mode so it's not radiating your stomach. This actually also contributes to low stomach acid. So being mindful of that, be mindful of where you are in the vicinity of your computer when you're working on it so that you can actually reduce that radiation as well. Interesting, interesting. So I think this does really well on, on wrapping up our segment for digestive health. Um, I would ask anyone that if you think you have some of these symptoms, uh, reach out, ask us a, com or a question on the comment section or visit getfitwithjodel.com and, and email her, uh, ask questions. We wanna help people figure out these issues on not just stomach acid, but digestive and overall health as well. So. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. We are going to be putting out more and more of these educational videos free to the public. Uh, visit getfitwithjodel.com, read her blog. She's got amazing stuff on there, so check her out. And share oh, this with... Musclesandveggies.com, that's his page. So go there, he's got some awesome blogs too. We're in this together, so we just decided to do these videos together. <laughs> and share this with anyone who you may think have these symptoms or you may think could learn from this or benefit from this. Uh, share this with your friends. So thanks for uh, these uh, delightful tidbits of information today, Jodell, and, and we'll see you next time, okay? Bye, everyone.